Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday Night in the Word. I'm Pastor Rick, and uh, here at New Life Christian Assembly in Haverhill, Mass. Uh, good to see you all signing on here tonight. I see 14 people. That's wonderful. Uh, so, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, good to see my wife signing on here. Hi, Pamela. I just saw your name on there somewhere. Where'd it go? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to go down the list to say hi. Uh, so, Danica, God bless you. Tony, God bless you. Rob LaFountain, all the way in Illinois. God bless you, Brother Rob. Give our love to your family. Amen. Joyce, good to see you. Jerry. All right, Jerry. James Carter is here. <clears throat> Sandy Whitney is here. Hey, Sandy, how are you? Christine Mitnick. I know we've got to be praying for a new roommate for Christine out in Colorado. Uh, Jeannie Ellis. God bless you, Jeannie. Okay. Pamela Jason. Hey, Jason. Good to see you on here tonight. Um, I'll give you a text later, Jason. I've got to give you a little update on something. Okay. Pauline. Hey, Pauline. Good to see you here. Uh, Donna Susie. Dolores. Very good. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, this is, a, this is an oldie but a goodie, this shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> Short sleeve black shirt. Uh, all right. Hey, Rob. Yeah, good to see you. Okay, well, uh, if you could hit your share button, we'll try to pick up a few more people that way. Um, trusting the Lord, one day we're going to be around the 30 mark every week. I know one, one week we were close to 25, 30, and uh, I keep thinking, you know, 30 would be a great number to be at, but it doesn't. I mean, we'll, we're going to have this Bible study regardless. But anyway, uh, how is everyone? It is so humid right now, uh, and it feels like it has to rain. You know, you ever, get that, you ever get that feeling like it just has to rain to get rid of this humidity? Um, but anyway, it's, I guess it's supposed to rain tonight, maybe, or did it rain already? I don't even know. Maybe it did rain a little bit, but it didn't do much for the humidity. Um, so anyway, hope everyone had a good 4th of July and 5th of July. Uh, that was um, Sunday and Monday. Uh, the week is going along pretty well here. Uh, we have a few prayer requests we need to pray for. Um, as far as our schedule... Uh, there is a, a sisterhood uh, trip on Saturday. Uh, if any of the ladies are interested in going to a trip up to New Hampshire to visit Dolores's place of business, uh, please contact Pamela. You can even write a note on here, but uh, someone will get back to you about some more information about it. I did send an email about it. Uh, so ladies, that's this Saturday. And uh, James Carter and Danica, you had mentioned something about a young adult thing. Uh, is that happening tomorrow night? Just write it in if you can under the comments, just so anyone between 18 and 30 would be uh, kind of connected to that. And uh, okay, so anyway, we have some things to pray for. Uh, so why don't we open up, open up with a word of prayer and we will pray and we will get into our study tonight. We'll be in Romans 15 and 16 tonight. Okay, dear Lord God, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we could utilize live stream, and thank you that it's working okay. Uh, we pray your blessing upon our study, our time together, our fellowship. Lord, bring in as many people as you want, <clears throat> and let your word go forward. Let everyone sense your Holy Spirit. Even though we're not together physically, we're together spiritually. So may your blessing be upon all that takes place uh, tonight uh, through this Bible study. Lord, we do pray for Gary and Joanne Feldman, continuing to pray for healing for them in the name of Jesus. We pray for miracles in their bodies. We pray for encouragement. We pray for emotional strength and physical healing. We pray, Lord, for Millie Cobbett, for healing of her knee surgery. Let her be well in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, for Bruce Gwibb, uh, who's just um, had a bad reaction to some medication. We pray that he's doing better. We pray for Alan Martineau that uh, cut himself, cut his hand over the weekend. We pray for healing for him. We pray for Pamela Amendola, just for healing in her life as she uh, deals with some allergies right now. Lord, touch her and, and uh, let her be well. We pray for Sandy Whitney, Lord, continued healing for her and our brother John 
uh, Eastman, Lord, healing for him in the name of Jesus. And um, Lord, anyone else that may be sick, we, we pray for your touch. Adrian Velez, we pray for healing. And Lord, we also want to pray for our kids' ministry at the church. We pray your blessing over the meeting on Sunday regarding kids' ministry. And Lord, that... Uh, that uh, a sufficient number of volunteers will come forward and that we'll get this this ship running in a week or two. So uh, we call upon your name, Lord, to provide the, the workers um, and the direction we need at this time to resume our kids' ministry. Lord, and thank you for our children. Bless every one of them. Thank you for all the kids that were in church on Sunday. And uh, we pray that we'll get that kids' ministry going really soon. So we thank you for all these things. We seek your blessing over our Bible study. We pray for your will to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay, hey, Pastor Bill. Uh, so James is saying, hey, Roseanne, good to see you. Uh, the more hearts there are, the more Facebook makes the live stream visible. Well, hallelujah. How do I do hearts? Can I do hearts from this end? I guess I can. <laughs> yeah, Let's get a bunch of hearts going then. It'll be good for Facebook. I don't know how that works, but James is the expert, so he knows. Uh, okay, so we're in Romans chapter 15. And uh, last week we ended up uh, right around verses, uh, oh, around verse 29 we ended. We, we went through verses 22 to 29, actually. So here's the a little recap. Uh, Romans 15, 22 to 29, Paul is, uh, had wanted to visit the, uh, the Roman church. Um, he uh, says in verse 24, when he goes to Spain, uh, he's going to go by way of Rome. So when he goes to Spain, he's going to stop by and visit the people there, have some fellowship there. He says in, uh, let's see, verse number 22 and 23, uh, he's been hindered from going because he's been so involved in ministry. Hey, Lisa Dion, good to see you. Lisa, God bless you. Hope you're feeling well. Eva, good to see you too. God bless you. Um, so, you know, Paul is getting kind of personal with these guys and saying, I want to visit you. I've been busy. Um, but uh, when I do go to Spain, I'll stop by to see you and spend some time with you. Uh, then he says in verse number 25, right now I'm going to Jerusalem. Uh, remember, he is in uh, he's in Greece right now, either in Corinth or uh, Sincrea. Uh, we see that in verse number one of chapter sixteen. <clears throat> um, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But um, so he's going to Jerusalem to bring an offering from the Gentile believers of Macedonia and Achaia to the Jewish believers in Jerusalem. And I can't help but think that Paul is trying to make a point. You know, this whole chapter 14 and 15 is all about the Jews and Gentiles getting along and not making uh, bigger issues out of things than they need to, the food and the, the days that they worship or whatever. And he's saying, look, these Gentile believers uh, collected an offering to give to the Jewish believers down in Jerusalem. I'm going to bring the offering down there. Uh, so this is an example of how Jews and Gentiles can get along and benefit from each other. He says something interesting in uh, verse number 27, uh, that they were indebted to each other. Uh, the Gentile believers were indebted to the Jews because the, through the Jewish faith uh, came the Messiah. And now the Jews are indebted to the Gentiles because the Gentiles are bringing an offering to bless them and to take care of them. So it kind of goes both ways there. And Paul is, is giving this as an example, I'm sure, to say, look, uh, Jews and Gentiles, and all the scripture he quoted from the Old Testament in chapter 15 before this, we won't go through that again, but he quoted so many scriptures from the, uh, from the prophets that talked about how this Messiah, how the gospel, how the good news was going to go to Jew and Gentile. And, and here it is a reality, you know, that it's happening. So uh, he picks up in verse number 30, and uh, we're going to start at verse number 30 and finish up chapter 15, and then get into chapter 16. I think a few weeks ago we looked at the prayer of Paul, but I want to look at it again. Uh, verse number 30, he says, Now I beg you, brethren, I beg you, 
I don't know that I've ever begged, well, maybe I have actually uh, begged people to do something at church. Uh, I might beg them to, to come to a certain service or beg them to get involved in, a, in something. Um, oh, hey, Christine, I'm, I'm just looking at your comment here. You and Larry have COVID. My goodness. We're going to pray for you right now. Hey, Anita, God bless you. Uh, Christine and Larry, we want to pray for, for this, this dear couple right now. Can you join me, church? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray against this COVID thing for Christine and Larry. We pray for healing for them. We pray that it won't be too bad. We pray that their immune system will fight it off. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be there to, to defeat this illness uh, and that they will be fine. They will be well. We pray that they won't miss a lot of work or miss a lot of life. We pray that they'll get right back on track really soon and have a clean bill of health. So Lord, touch them, uh, encourage them, and strengthen them during this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, Lisa Conway, good to see you as well. <laughs> Sandy, you did 300 hearts. My goodness, that's a lot of hearts. That's great. That's a Facebook algorithm thing. Yeah, I, I know. I'm learning more and more and more about that. So verse uh, 30, I beg you, what can I beg you to do, church? What, I could say, I beg you to pray for me, pray for my family. I, I beg you to um, pray for every member of my family. I pray that you, I, I beg you that you, um, that if you can't make it to church, you'll join live stream. But, I, but I'll beg you, if you could come to church, come to church. Um, I'll beg you to share your faith with somebody. Invite someone to church. Invite someone to, to the live stream, to the Bible study. Invite, or just, just share your faith with somebody. Uh, <laughs> that's good, Sandy. That's great. Well, okay. All right, anyway, Paul says, I beg you, brethren, I beg you, uh, I beg you, brethren. It's not like, you know, these are just people. These are like brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I beg you, um, you know, uh, co-believers, friends, uh, my comrades. I beseech you. I implore you. I plead with you. Uh, and I, I beg you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I beg you through the love of the Holy Spirit. Well, you think he has some great thing going on here, but all he's saying is, I beg you uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the love of the Holy Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me. So I'm begging you to pray for me, Paul says. That's a, that's a great request. Uh, I'm just looking at the comments here. Lisa Conway, my brother's pneumonia. Hmm... Okay, I'm going to pray for him right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for Lisa Conway's brother for healing of pneumonia. Um, and I pray that you help Lisa as she takes care of her mom while he is sick. So Lord, touch this family, touch her brother, bring healing to him in the name and authority of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. And right here, it's beginning to rain, folks, here at New Life Christian Assembly. I got the door open. And I hear the rain beating against the roof. <laughs> All right. So Paul, in verse 30, he's begging these people, these brothers and sisters, to pray for him. Pray to God for me. You have to wonder, what was going on in Paul's life that he was so, like, you know, desperate for prayer? Well, he gives you a little insight in the next couple of verses. So verse 31, the first thing he's, he wants prayer for, that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe. Okay, so he's bringing an offering from the Gentile Christians to the Jewish uh, Christians. You know, we see this in verse 28, 27, 26, etc. 
So he's saying, I pray that I would be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea. He's probably referring to the Jewish people that aren't believing in Jesus. And he's praying that he would be delivered from, their, from them, from their, their, their harshness, their hindrance, their persecution. Uh, he just doesn't want to deal with the hassle of, of dealing with that right now. He wants to bring the offering and then get on with his, his life and ministry. So, uh, so he's praying, uh, asking for prayer that he'd be delivered from the uh, unbelievers in Judea as he brings this offering. Yeah, I made it rain. I think Elijah did that, didn't he? In the book of James, we read that. Uh, <laughs> and then he says in verse 32, um, I'm sorry, verse 31, that my service for Jerusalem would be acceptable to the saints. So you hear what he's saying? He's saying, look, I'm bringing an offering that was collected by the Gentile Christians in Macedonia and Achaia, verse 26. I'm bringing it to Jerusalem, uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 25. And I'm praying in verse 31, I'm praying that those in Jerusalem would, would, would uh, receive... Um, my gift and that it would be acceptable to them he doesn't want to have a problem they could say we don't want that gift from the gentiles or maybe they weren't ready for the gentile believers or whatever he's saying pray that my service for jerusalem would be acceptable um, to the saints so verse 31 paul's got issues with non-believers paul has potential issues with believers so he's asking for prayer uh, are we learning anything yet church prayer will cover everything so whatever it is we're doing we need to be a people of prayer. Uh, verse 30, verse 32. Uh, uh, this is the third request. That I may come to you with joy and by the will of God. Paraphrase, that it would be God's will that I get up there to Rome. And that when I get there, I'll have joy and you'll have joy and it'll be a good visit. Um, so pray that it'll be worked out that I could visit with you up there in Rome. And then the fourth thing is, that when we do get together, we would be a blessing to each other. We would be a, a we would be a, a means of refreshing one another. Uh, so, let me let me say them again. Verses thirty one and thirty two. That I may be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea. Uh, that my service, my when I bring the offering, would be acceptable to the saints. That I'll make it to Rome with joy, according to God's will. And that um, when I get there, we will bless one another. So that's a really good prayer request. And then he says in verse 33, Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. So going back to chapter 14, uh, verses 10 and 13. But 14, 10 says, Why do you judge your brother? Why do you show contempt for your brother? And verse uh, 13 Let's not judge one another, but let's resolve this, that we won't be a stumbling block. So in, in 1533, he says, Now may the God of peace, not anguish and stress and judging, but may the God of peace be with you all. Amen. I really see Paul's pastor's heart in these scriptures, you know. He wants what's best for the people. He listens to them. He, he understands their dilemma and their, you know, their issues regarding, you know, different cultures and different things. And obviously this is a time of transition uh, in the church because now we're going from Jewish only to Jewish and Samaritan and now Jewish and Gentile. And now it's full blown. It's wide open to anyone. And uh, still for some people it was a, it was a long road in, in accepting all of that. So... Uh, I understand his his situation, uh, but he's he's good and he's praying and he worked through that, and um, I think he leaves off on a good note in chapter fifteen. Uh, Rob LaFountain's getting uh, thunder out there in Illinois, very humid. Well, this weather here has been pretty crazy. I heard on the radio it's either going to be uh, Higher than normal or lower than normal? Uh, today was higher than normal. I think it was close to 90 today. And uh, tomorrow is supposed to be in the 70s. And, that, and that's lower than normal. So I don't know what's going on. But it's, uh, we're having the full, 
the full gamut of uh, weather these days. Well, the other day I came out early to go to the church, and uh, it was so cool. I mean, the weather was cool. It was very uh, nice. Uh, you know, I felt very comfortable. Uh, Pamela says, I might need an ark to get home. Well, hopefully within uh, the hour, well, 40 minutes or so, it'll let up. But uh, Pamela, maybe you could meet me with the umbrella. We could meet, you know, no, I, I'm just teasing. I'm, I think I have an umbrella here. Anyway, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with you, Lisa Conway, 55, 60. Okay. All right, so let's start chapter 16. Now, remember, when this was written, uh, Paul didn't break it down into chapters and verses. Uh, it was all one humongous document. Uh, so scholars along the way, <laughs> you can sing in the rain all you want. Uh, yeah, so, you know, so scholars divvied it up, broke it up. So at the end of chapter 15, there is the word amen. So that's a great place to, to pause or to, to shift or to start a new chapter. Uh, chapter 16 is the last chapter. Uh, and um, he gets really personal in this chapter. He calls a lot of people out by name to greet them and to remember them, etc. Has some first personal little teaching for them. Uh, so let's see what he says here. So chapter 16 of Romans, verse number 1. How many people we have on here? We have 19 people. Okay. Um, so chapter 16, verse 1. I commend to you Phoebe, Phoebe, uh, Phoebe, sorry, Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church in Sincrea that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and a sister in whatever business she has need of you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. Then he says, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers. And then verse 5, he says, greet my beloved Epionitis. And then verse 6 through the rest is just a whole bunch of different names. But uh, So he's talking about, let's see, Verse number one and two, he's talking about Phoebe. Now, the reason I know the name Phoebe is because many, many years ago, uh, prior to my Christian conversion, uh, there was a great singer uh, who had a very unusual voice. Her name was Phoebe Snow. And uh, she wrote a song, she sang a song called Loving You. And she, she had the ability to hit like three octaves or four, I forget what it was, something crazy. But her voice would go so high and then go down to a normal pitch, maybe a little bit lower. But I'll never forget, she was a, a wonderful singer. I believe she passed away. But uh, anyway, Phoebe is a biblical name. And uh, so Phoebe, what we don't know much about, all we know is in verses one and two. So Phoebe, is uh, let's see she's a sister in the lord she's our sister and he says i commend to you phoebe our sister so phoebe is leaving uh the church in in Sincrea, where paul probably i think in corinthians he makes mention of the fact that he was in in corinth or Sincrea, and so he she's going to rome and so he's saying to the Roman church, I commend to you, Phoebe, our sister. So she's coming to the church in Rome. So heads up, everybody, Phoebe's coming to town. So she's a sister, and she's a servant of the church in Sancrie. A servant uh, meaning, the word there is the word for deacon. And we see some criteria for deacon in 1 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, which I won't go into right now, but th in other words, Phoebe had a position uh, in the church. She was valuable. Um, she, it says that um, she, she was Paul's, she was a helper of many, and she was Paul's helper. And uh, so, so receive her. I commend, commend her to you. 
And uh, he says, receive her, in verse number two, receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints. Well, we said this last week, that a lot of times people would travel and Paul would put out a word to receive such a person. Um, and so he's saying to the Roman church, receive this dear sister in the faith because um, she, she's, uh, uh, she's honorable, she's a good worker, she's dear to me and, and to many people. But uh, receive her in a manner worthy of the saints with respect and honor. Now this is important because, well, to get right down to it, she's a woman. And so for Paul to elevate a woman to the status of a man um, is probably anti-cultural, but normal for the church. The church was always a step ahead in, in that regard. Jesus did the same thing. He always elevated women. Uh, so Paul's doing the same thing. But he, he's saying, don't treat her like a second-class person here. This is, this is a valuable person in the church. She's our sister. She's a servant or a deacon. Um, she's a helper of many. She's a helper of myself personally. So please receive her and take care of her when she comes. Uh, just a side note. Um, Paul addresses Timothy. Uh, he says in 1 Timothy 4, 6, he says, if you do these things, you'll be a good minister. So he, Paul uses different words to identify people. Uh, for Timothy, he was a good minister. For Apollos in chapter, uh, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 18, he was a, a teacher extraordinaire. He was eloquent and he knew the scriptures and he, and he was a good speaker. And he had that label. Uh, Epaphras uh, was termed a faithful minister of the gospel. But Phoebe is, is listed as a servant of the Lord, a deacon, someone who, who was hands-on involved in the work of the church. And so a uh, prominent person and uh, high compliments from Paul. Um, and so he says, I commend her to you in verse 1. In verse 2 he says, receive her, she's going to Rome. And um, it says, receive her in a, in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever business she has. Now that raises a question. What business would Phoebe have in going to Rome? So in the study of the word business, I guess there's different Greek words to, that talk about business and the types of business. But this word for business uh, has a connotation of finances. So there's a thought here among scholars that Paul was sending Phoebe to Rome, to the Roman church, to address the idea of fundraising for his ministry, which does make sense, but uh, we don't hear much about that kind of thing. But um, it would make sense that he would do that, if he, especially if he wanted to go to Spain uh, by way of Rome. He's sending Phoebe up there to discuss business with them and, and so on. So people think, scholars think that it was likely that she was going to talk about raising money uh, to help Paul in his travels. So, so that's, that's one, one strong possibility. Um, but this raises the, a greater question in my mind. And, um, you know, like in, in, my, in my experience as a Christian, like, I never realized how important some issues were to people. Um, like, I never realized it until I, was, I had to deal with it. For instance, I never knew how big of an issue the issue of once saved, always saved is. That's a big issue for a lot of people. Uh, eternal security. Um, as opposed to, so Calvinism versus Arminianism. Um, now, we, in the assemblies, we believe that a person... Um, could walk away and reject the Lord. Uh, now they would say that then if they did that, that person never really received the Lord. Well, that's, you know, how do you figure that out? But anyway, that was a big, that is a big issue. But this, another big issue is the role of women in the church. And I never knew how big of an issue that was, but there are people that really feel very strongly on both sides of that coin. Um, the conservative way would be that women are not allowed to become pastors, nor leaders, nor teachers. Um, the, the more liberal view would be that women can be ordained and, and can be those things. Uh, so 
so we're seeing here Phoebe definitely a woman uh, Priscilla is a woman verse number six Mary is a woman who labored much among them uh, so we need to take a look at the role of women in the church uh, Hey, Rob, Roy Orbison. Yeah, I remember Roy Orbison. He had a good voice, too. So, um, so we, we in the Pentecostal church, uh, we, we t you know, we're so conservative in, in many, you know, uh, doctrines and principles and so forth. But on this one issue of women ministering in the church, we are a little bit more liberal. And, and, and the reason is because of being Pentecostal. And I found that non-Pentecostal denominations, some of them, are more apt to uh, disallow women to be pastors in their churches. So it goes hand in hand that we that are Pentecostal would allow it because we're Pentecostal. So let me explain that. I want to go back to Acts chapter uh, Acts chapter 2 uh, because when the Holy Spirit fell um, the first thing that happened was as you know they spoke in tongues and they were emboldened Peter stood up to preach and as he's preaching the first thing he says is well the first thing he says is these guys aren't drunk but this is what Joel the prophet was talking about so in Acts 2 17 uh, 16 and 17 and so forth he says it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, he's quoting Joel here, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Old men shall dream dreams. On my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. And so from that, we get the understanding that God is pouring out His Spirit upon men and women. They will dream dreams and prophesy and all this good stuff and be used in the gifts of the Spirit. So why would we disallow them to be leaders and teachers and pastors in the church? That's the logic. Um, now I know there's some scriptures, uh, you know, for the Paul wrote, uh, when Paul told the women in, in Corinth to be quiet, uh, he was referring to that particular church because in that particular setting where the men were sitting down here and the women were sitting in a balcony or in the back and they were yelling back and forth to each other, he just said, tell them all to be quiet because no one could hear anything. It wasn't because of their role and their position in the church. It was just uh, because of the noise factor in that, in that particular church. Uh, I think Paul writes something to Timothy along the, a similar line. But when you look at the big picture, God, pour, you know, very clearly, Acts 2, uh, verses 16, 17, 18, 19, God is pouring out His Spirit upon men and women. So why would we disallow them to be used in the gifts or disallow to, to be used in their giftings, whatever their giftings are? So that's the logic uh, that, that we're coming from. So the Assemblies of God uh, does believe in uh, allowing women to be involved in the church, in leadership, teaching, and pastoring and ordination, actually. Um, if you want a, a, a fuller study, please go to ag.org. I'll write it down. Did I do this one time? I think I did. www.ag.org slash position paper women in ministry I think I got that right yeah there you go uh, it's a very thorough study uh, very well balanced study I would encourage you if you have any questions look it up and there you go all right so anyway so Phoebe is uh, in leadership and uh, she's been given a big responsibility to go to Rome. I think we could say, we could safely say on behalf of Paul, um, with some area of business, uh, probably fundraising, but uh, not necessarily, it could be something else, but I, I think it might be. So she's going to Rome. Then he says in chapter 16, verse number three, now 
So Phoebe's going to Rome, but in Rome already are all these people that Paul knows, which is another little thing that we should talk about. How did Paul know Priscilla and Aquila, uh, Epinitis, Mary, Andronicus, Junia, uh, Amplius, Urbanus, Stachys, Apelles, Herodian, Tryphena, and Tryphosa, Rufus, Asyncritus, Phlegian, Hermes, well, etc., etc. He knew a lot of people. And I think what happens is in those days, people did travel a lot. And uh, the Christian church was basically small. So if you were a Christian, you did come in contact with many other Christians. I mean, I'm amazed now at how many Christians I know and we all know from different churches, different states. Um, so it's not unusual, I think, for Paul to have a lot of acquaintances. These people settled in Rome. Maybe they were from Rome, but they're in Rome now in, in any case. So Priscilla and Aquila. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, verse number three. My fellow workers in Christ Jesus. So here you have a husband and a wife team. Phoebe apparently was single. We don't know anything about her husband, if she had a husband. Uh, Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers, who risk their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. So now Paul is opening up something that he knows of a church, uh, of a home church in Rome. So I think how it worked was there were probably numerous home churches but they were all part of the Church of Rome, you know. So one of the home churches was headed up by Priscilla or uh, Priscilla and Aquila. So he says, greet them, in verse number three. Uh, let's talk about uh, the background of Priscilla and Aquila. Uh, Acts chapter 18. I love when the book of Acts runs parallel with the epistles. Uh, we see different stories in the book of Acts uh, and then Paul later writing a letter to those people, like the Ephesians or Acts 19, the Corinthians are in there, um, the Philippians, etc. And here, here we have uh, a little insight into Priscilla and Aquila. So in Acts 18, it says, uh, After these things, verse number 1, Paul left from Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila, who was born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, he came to them. And because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them. Paul stayed with them because uh, in work, for by occupation, they were tent makers. So we have this idea that Paul uh, met Aquila and Priscilla, kind of latched on to them. They were tent makers. He stayed with them. They provided for him, you know, through his stay there in, um, in Corinth. Um, let's see, in, let's see, verse number 18, we read, um, Paul stayed there a good while, uh, there in uh, Achaia, verse 12, I'm in Acts 18. Then he took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria, and Priscilla and Aquila were there with him. So they traveled with Paul. So they were close. They were traveling companions, co-workers for Christ. In uh, Acts 18, 26, uh, we read, um, oh, this is the story of uh, Apollos. Um, Paul had left there at this point, but Priscilla and Aquila were still there uh, in Ephesus. And uh, they took aside Apollos and taught him a more excellent way. Um, it says, Aquila and Priscilla heard Apollos. They took him aside, explained to him the way of God more accurately. Uh, we believe that uh, Apollos was a great speaker and teacher, but he didn't know about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So Aquila and Priscilla took him aside to explain to him a more excellent way, uh, which is manifested in chapter 19, but that's another story. So here you have Priscilla and Aquila, friends of Paul, tent makers like Paul, co-workers, uh, traveling companions, and now we see that Priscilla and Aquila were able to teach and correct. And uh, so that was very, you know, very good of them and commendable of them. So Paul says, you know, say hello to them for, for me. Um, and then he says in verse number 12, they risk their own necks for my life. 
So now it goes a little step deeper. You know, they weren't just friends and co-workers and traveling companions and teachers. They, they, they dealt with things together. They had experiences together. They had problems that they worked through, not with each other, but with the situation they were involved with. And so we were thinking about that, like what, 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 how did they risk their necks for them? And uh, two episodes come to mind. Uh, if you go to Acts 18, uh, if you know the story here in Acts 18, uh, in verse number 12, it says, so, so Priscilla and Aquila were with Paul here in Acts 18. And Galileo was the proconsul of Achaia. The Jews, verse 12, with one accord rose up against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuades men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was about to open his mouth, Galileo said to the Jews, If it were a matter of wrongdoing, etc., etc., um, so all the Greeks took Sosthenes, verse 17, uh, and beat him before the judge. Anyway, there was a big problem there. And, and so reading into it, the idea is Priscilla and Aquila were there with Paul when this happened. So perhaps they risked their necks to protect him, to shield him, to put him up for the night, maybe hide him so that he wouldn't get in more trouble uh, with this uh, pro council. So that's 18. Then in verse 19, uh, there's another episode. Now, they're still traveling companions together. Uh, hello, Angela. Angela Ferno Hamilton from Worcester. God bless you. Glad you made it tonight. We're in Acts 16. Um, I'm sorry. We're in Romans 16, but right now we're in Acts 19. So in Acts 19, if you know the story there in Ephesus, uh, Paul had come back to Ephesus. There was a big uproar because... Uh, the people were turning away from worshiping Diana. They were worshiping the true God. And Demetrius and his, his, uh, his entourage were losing money because no one was buying the little statues they made to Diana. And uh, there was a great uproar in that city. Uh, it says uh, in verse 28 uh, that when they heard this, um, uh, let's, let's go to verse 27. So Acts 19, 27. Uh, this trade of ours is in danger, falling into disrepute. Also the temple of, of the great goddess Diana may be disposed, her mag magnificent destroyed. Uh, and and uh, when they heard this, they were filled, of, filled with wrath and cried out saying, God is great, I'm sorry, great is Diana, uh, great is the God of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion. They rushed into the theater with one accord. They seized... Gaius and Aristarchus and the Macedonians and Paul's traveling companion. And when Paul wanted to go in, they wouldn't let him. But anyway, there's a great uproar and a great riot. And the idea is that perhaps Priscilla and Aquila, again, shielded Paul, you know, kind of prevented him from getting too involved and getting hurt. So when he's, we're back in Romans 16, who risked their own lives for my, their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, I give thanks for what they did, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks. Because what Paul is saying here, if something happened to me, man, all the work that I've done wouldn't have got done because I would have been in heaven. <laughs> so he's, he's thanking them for saving him, protecting him. All the churches would, would thank them for their care of Paul. Not to mention they did put him up. They did probably feed him and give him a roof over his head and so on. So, yeah, so all that. So, you know, he's close to these people. Uh, they got involved in his life in ministry. They poured out. They invested in Paul. Uh, they risked their lives, you know. And so Paul says, greet them for me. And likewise, he says in verse number five, uh, greet the church that is in their home. So this is a little glimpse into how churches were back then. Uh, they didn't have a big building where hundreds of people went every week. They had homes and they had riverbanks and they had parks and they had, you know, the center of town where people would gather to read scriptures and worship and sing songs and have fellowship together. Uh, so the idea of home church comes out of that type of scripture. Greet the church that is in their house. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, something about home churches. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians 16. 
just interesting how this develops like this. So here you have Paul right now. He's in Rome. I'm, I'm sorry. He's in, he's in Corinth right now, writing this epistle. And he's writing to the Roman church to greet Priscilla and Aquila, who have a church in their home in Rome. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 16, 19, we read this. Um, <laughs> so now Paul is writing the letter to the Corinthians from Rome. He was in prison when he wrote this, I believe. And he's writing in verse 19, uh, The churches of Asia greet you, Corinthians. Aquila and Priscilla greet you heartily in the, in the Lord with the church that is in their house. So yeah, Paul was in Rome writing this. So like they, it's like crisscrossing. So in Romans, he's in, in Corinth writing to the church in Rome saying greet Priscilla and, and Pris, Priscilla and Aquila. But in Corinthians, he's writing to the Corinthians from Rome saying we greet you and they greet you from their home in, in Rome. Was that confusing? I, I thought that was interesting. All right, yeah, they greet you. All right, then we go to uh, Colossians chapter 4. And verse number 15, we read Greek. So this is Paul's letter to Colossae, the Christians in Colossae, the Colossians. Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea, and greet Nymphos and the church that is in his house. So here you have another situation where there's a house church. Then we have uh, in the book of Philemon. Uh, Philemon is uh, right before Hebrews and right after Titus. But in Philemon 2, he says, uh, To Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer, to the beloved Athia, Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. So Philemon had a church in his house. Uh, so, you know, several years ago, uh, Millie Cobbett had opened up her home for a uh, Thursday night Bible study. And uh, she, well, I'll tell you what, she did a great job. She cooked a dinner for anyone who was there. There were anywhere from four or five people to ten people. You know, maybe sometimes more, sometimes less. But it was really nice to have a Bible study in a home. Uh, we would sing and pray and study the Word, have a discussion around the table. It, it kind of gave you a glimpse of what it might have been like back in those days to have a house church. And we tried hard to um, establish home groups here at the church. This is maybe uh, it's a, maybe four or five years ago now. Uh, we tried. We had some teachings about it. We had some meetings. Um, we had some people lined up, but it just didn't really take off the way I thought it might. Uh, some churches have home groups and they do really well. I think what might help is if we were radical and uh, did away with every other church service, every other midweek service, and just had a like a fellow like a home group night or a couple of nights of home groups during the week and had nothing at the church that might work. I just haven't been ready to pull the trigger on that. Uh, because Wednesday nights have been going so well. Um, that's something to think about in the future. But when we had a Wednesday night plus a Thursday night, um, you know, people couldn't go to both for whatever reason. And I'm not, you know, I, I don't blame them, actually. Uh, with kids, with work, with being tired, with trying to go to bed and this and that, uh, it's hard to go out at night anymore. I, I realize that. Uh, so anyway, but anyway, home groups, uh, you know, I, many years ago, we had a home group when Pam and I lived in New York. Um, yeah, Donna, you were there many times. That was great. Um, but we had a home group in New York as a part of our church. And uh, in that church, uh, let's see, like on Tuesday night, there was a home group somewhere. On Wednesday night, there was a couple of home groups somewhere. On Thursday night, there was a couple of home groups. And so it was broken up by proximity. The idea was if, if you lived near a, a person's home that was having a home group, you would go to that one. Although if you wanted to go somewhere else, you could. But most people went where it was close <coughs> to, a, <coughs> to avoid travel time. And it was wonderful. We had great times of fellowship. 
uh, study, worship, and so forth. It was, it was really good. Uh, yes, that's right, Lisa. That's right. So anyway, something to think about in the future. I, I'm not opposed to it, but I think I probably would cancel everything uh, and just do home groups. Like maybe have four homes available, maybe five on, on Tuesday, <coughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. <coughs> and uh, I don't know. We'll see what would happen. All right, how we doing, everybody? How many people on here? Twenty people. Very good. Very good. Uh, Jerry, I, yeah, I, and you know, Jerry, I do too. I look forward to this night the way it is. Um, we're not going to change anything anytime soon, believe me. Uh, we're we're in a groove right here. In fact, this is this is uh, Wednesday night in the Word class number sixty nine. Uh, I've been keeping track on my on my papers. I read it in the corner. So last week was 68, and you can just see right here, this is number 69, which is amazing. We've been doing this for 69 weeks. All right, so where are we? Home groups, all right. So chapter 16, Romans 16, verses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5a. Uh, greet Phoebe, greet Priscilla and Aquila, and... Uh, one is going to Rome. The, the couple is in Rome. Uh, all right. How many hearts? Okay. We have 4,200 and... Oh, wait. It's going up as I speak. 4,334. 30, 40... <laughs> it's 4,300 and something. That's a lot of hearts. So thank you for the hearts. A lot of likes. 580 uh, thumbs up. That's great, too. Praise the Lord for that. All right, so let's continue. Verse uh, 5b. we got a few more minutes. Greet my beloved Appionitis, who is the first fruits of Achaia to Christ. Greet my beloved Appionitis, who is the first fruits of Achaia to Christ. Well, now... Apparently, Appionitis or Epionitis is in Rome. So please, he's writing to the Roman church. Greet this dear brother, um, my beloved. Um, I, I always was interested in his name. Uh, I don't know what it means. Uh, I, I should have looked that up. But I always would get his name confused with two other names. In Colossians 1, 7 and 8, we have a person by the name of Epaphras. Epaphras, um, and let me just read that real quick here. So Colossians chapter one. <laughs> Colossians, Colossians one verses seven and eight. Uh, As you learn from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who was a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the Spirit. So Epaphras there was a person who traveled around as a worker with Paul. He greeted the church in Colossae. Then there's another guy by the name of Epaphroditus. And we find him in Philippians chapter 2 and Philippians chapter 4. And he was a, a, a fellow worker, uh, a, a very diligent worker, friend of Paul's. Uh, so that, they're important people too. But anyway, in, in Romans 16, 5b is a, a, the third person, Epionitis. Uh, uh, he is, he's known as the Beloved, and he's known as the first fruits of Achaia. So let's just talk about this for a minute. Um, interestingly, in 1 Corinthians 16, 15, um, we read that, uh, let me read that to you so I don't mess it up. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 16, 15 says, I urge you, brethren, you know the household of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have devoted themselves to the ministry of the saints. 
So I urge you to remember the household of Stephanus, who was the first fruits of Achaia. Well, Stephanus, and then in, in Romans 16, 5b, Epionitis are both of the first fruits of Achaia. Now, Achaia is a section of Greece. And so th these guys being the first fruits, uh, they're the first crop of believers that gave their hearts to the Lord uh, from, that from that region. And so Epinitis and, and Stephanus are somehow connected as being the first fruits. Um, so, but uh, Stephanus was in Corinth and Epinitis is now in Rome. So they did travel back in those days. Uh, but Achaia um, is an interesting area. Um, I'll just mention a few things here. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, we read that the, the church of Thessalonica, uh, which was a strong church, a thriving church, uh, their testimony went out as far as Achaia, and the people of Achaia heard the gospel through the Thessalonians. And so probably Epinitus and Stephanus were part of that group that heard the gospel through the Thessalonians, and I think that's commendable. But in verse, uh, chapter 18, verses 12 to 17, Paul was tried in Achaia. So Achaia, again, is a, a section of Greece. Um, so there would be Gentiles uh, predominantly. They would probably be scholarly. As you know, Athens had the philosophers and so forth, and that kind of permeated Greece. Uh, so it's an important region. And uh, so in Romans 16, 5b, Greet my beloved. Now, the word beloved, and I, we're going to have to end with this, but can you, can you think of anyone that you would call beloved? Yeah, okay, Lisa, that's right. He, he was the, the first fruit means the first convert. Uh, the province of Asia is uh, another, another uh, interpretation of the word Achaia, because mine says Achaia, but there's a footnote that some translations do say Asia. But um, if it were Asia, it would be a part of Greece on the, on the northeast side that's close to Asia. So I think either way, we get the idea that it's, it's that region of, uh, of northern Greece um, or eastern Greece uh, close to the continent of Asia. But that's debatable. Uh, okay, so anyway... Um, Beloved, my beloved Epionitis. Who can you say is beloved? You know, I think of Christians in my life that I know. I would call them beloved because I really do love them and they're loving people. And we have a special kinship. In order to have that, that name or that title, there would, have to be, there would have to be a special relationship. But I think it's a goal for all of us to have that type of relationship with one another where we could say, my beloved so-and-so, you know, my beloved friend in the faith, my beloved brother or my beloved sister. I mean, this goes back to what Jesus said. We've been talking about it so much. Uh, a new commandment I give you that you love one another, not as the world loves each other, but love each other as I have loved you. By this all will know, those on the outside will know, that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So we talked about that agape, how the agape has to start within the body of Christ and then spill out uh, into the community. And people will know that we belong to Christ by our love for one another and then our love for them as well. But Paul here says, Greet my beloved Epionitis, uh, who is the first fruits of Achaia slash Asia. Um, so, okay, then we're going to have to stop right there. Verse number six, uh, he says, greet Mary. We know nothing about who this Mary is, but the fact that she's mentioned has a lot of connotations for us. Uh, for instance, uh, Paul knew who she was. Paul kept a mental record of who she was and what she did. Um, Mary probably didn't know she was in this letter in a similar manner. Everything we've done for the Lord is written down in glory in the books and will be rewarded for the good works that we do. God keeps good records. Um, so we'll talk more about that next week, but uh, we don't know much about these people, um, although we do know something about 
verse number 13 about Rufus, uh, I'll give you a little heads up. Rufus uh, is probably, get a load of this, um, probably the son of Simon of Cyrene. He's mentioned in Mark chapter 15 that, that Simon had a son named Rufus. And so the idea is that Simon gave his heart to the Lord. His wife did, his kids did. And now this, uh, some years later, 20, 25 years later, after that episode uh, on the road to Calvary, uh, his son is now serving the Lord in Rome. So very interesting. Anyway, we've got to close it right there. I uh, want to thank you all for being on here tonight. Uh, 20 people, so grateful for 20 people. Hey, Johnny Brenz is here. Uh, okay, we'll pray for Daniel. I believe that's your son, right, Johnny? Uh, your phone, Pamela's phone died. That's many hearts. It sounded like I, I was only 4,000. <laughs> you heard me all the way at the house? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, 4,852, 4,852. 71 hearts, and it's going up as I, as I, as I speak. 4,885. 4,891. <laughs> so, wow. All right, I'm going to pray again. Uh, Johnny, we'll pray for your son, Daniel. And uh, praise the Lord. I hope the word was good for everyone. Uh, let's apply what we can to that. Uh, I guess you could say uh, Romans 16 it's important to know people's names. <laughs> it's important to know what they do. And uh, it's important to appreciate them and value them. That's what I'm getting out of it. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for all those hearts. Thank you for 20 people tuning in. And Lord, I pray that the study was good, that our, we're growing in our knowledge of the word and our application of the word. Um, Holy Spirit, continue to teach us, even as we sign off of this, continue to speak to us about this. And Lord, we pray for um, all the, that we prayed earlier, but we also want to lift up Johnny Brenz's son, Daniel. We pray for his salvation, his walk with you, and just for your touch to be upon this family in a very powerful way. Uh, Lord, let us have a good night. Keep us safe uh, in this weather. We pray that we won't lose our power. Uh, we pray for uh, safety and uh, we pray for a good rest of the week. We pray for a couple of great services on Sunday as we once again get into 1 John chapter 1. So thank you, Lord, for all these things. Uh, may your blessing rest upon us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, everybody. Thank you. I love you. I'm going to respond to your notes in just a sec. Okay, God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs>